And welcome to Hannity. And tonight, we're tracking multiple major stories, including big news from Canada. Now, the country's pathetic prime minister is still in hiding as the peaceful trucker protest gains tons of momentum. Despite GoFundMe trying to steal their donations or not dispense the money that people generously gave to them, despite a new injunction making it illegal for people and truckers and supporters to honk their horns. We'll explain all of it. We'll get to the scene as well tonight. Meanwhile, back here at home, top Democrats, they're getting rightfully slammed over their disgusting mask hypocrisy. But first, we're now beginning week two of the left's all-out, uh, well, attack on Joe Rogan. Boycott, fire, cancel, Wash, rinse, repeat. Over the weekend, a far-left group released a montage of Rogan saying the N-word over the years on his podcast. Let's state up front. This is simple. It's not a hard one. It's a word nobody should use ever. Rogan addressed it immediately. He apologized profusely. He said the clips were taken out of context. Here's what he said. I'm making this video to talk about the most regretful and shameful thing that I've ever had to talk about publicly. There's a video that's out that's a compilation of me saying the N-word. It's a video that's made of clips taken out of context of me of 12 years of conversations on my podcast. Now, I know that to most people, there's no context where a white person is ever allowed to say that word, never mind publicly on a podcast. And I agree with that now. I haven't said it in years, but for a long time, when I would bring that word up, like if it would come up in conversation and stay, instead of saying the N word, I would just say the word. I thought as long as it was in context, people would understand what I was doing. Like that context was part of the clip we were talking about Red Fox, how Red Fox said that word on television in the 1970s and how times have changed so much since then. Or about how Richard Pryor used it as one of the titles of one of his albums. This raises a lot of questions tonight. How will the country, the marketplace, respond to comedians? Oh, like, let's say Chris Rock, for example, who used the word a lot on stage. Time will tell. If Rogan had said nobody should ever use this word and said the word in that context, would people be as upset? Should they be? Now, I've not listened to any of the podcasts mentioned in the montage, but Rogan admits he's wrong, said he's embarrassed, he regrets it. His apology does sound sincere, kind of like Whoopi Goldberg's apology for her comments on the Holocaust. Well, to me, it was sincere. I know her well enough over the years. I know she's absolutely not anti-Semitic, and my rock-solid support for Israel and the Jewish people is well known. I wouldn't tolerate an anti-Semite or a racist. But again, this is the great thing about freedom. If you don't like any of these shows, you don't have to watch them. You don't like Whoopi Goldberg, you don't like Joe Rogan, turn the channel. No one can force you to watch. Sadly, with many on the left, all they want to do is silence, cancel, boycott, and end all dissent. Most people also feign outrage when they're not actually offended. They're using censorship as a political tool, often to cancel conservatives. Now, think about this. Joe Biden, he's the president of the United States. He ran for president for over a year. He's not a podcast host. He's not the co-host on a talk show, and yet he's never, ever apologized for his years of, frankly, downright racist rhetoric and actions. As a senator, we've told you, very few people ever pay attention, didn't even come up except for Kamala Harris. In one debate, he worked with segregationists. He worked with a former Klansman to stop uh, integration of public schools and busing. He worried that children would, would go to public schools that are, quote, in his words, a racial jungle. His mentor in the U.S. Senate was a former Klansman. During a hearing in the 80s, he himself used the N-word multiple times, uncensored, while reading a quote. He more recently proclaimed that you have to have a slight Indian accent if you want to work at a Dunkin' Donuts or a 7-Eleven in his state. He also referred to Obama as the, quote, the first mainstream African-American who is articulate and bright and clean. This is storybook, man. No other African-American before uh, Joe was articulate, bright, and clean. This is the first time. He bragged that his home state of Delaware, my state's a slave state, he said. And in Virginia, he donned that fake 
African-American accent told the crowd that Mitt Romney's going to put you all back in chains. Biden's son, Hunter, longtime crack addict, frequently used the N-word in text messages with his attorneys. Is there anyone on the left that was as outraged that the president of the United States, his son, uh, and he himself with his racial history, meaning Joe, is there anybody offended? Anyone speak out? How often did you hear about it? If you're a Democrat, if your last name is Clinton, Biden, no outrage from the Democratic left. There's no calls for boycotts, cancellations, or censoring at all whatsoever. If you're a conservative, or God forbid you have the last name Trump, I think the reaction we all know would be very different. The last time I checked, the president of the United States is a lot more powerful than a podcast host, no matter how popular that host may be. By the way, so is the new mayor of New York City. His name is Eric Adams. No one's calling for his canceling, his firing, his, or even of an apology that I've heard for these comments. Every day in the police department, I kicked those crackers' ass, man. I was unbelievable in the police department when you keep one of the blacks in law enforcement. Came a sergeant, a lieutenant, and a captain. You know the story. I would rather wear white all day, grow a beard, smoke some weed, and leave this stuff alone. <laughs> you hear me? Man, these Negroes, boy, for these Negroes that wake up every day and don't like themselves, yeah. they're gonna beat me up. The people who say where's our real black leaders, they're going to say, listen, who's Eric? You know, why does Eric think he should be mayor? Well, Negro, you run. Mayor Adams later apologized. Did he mean it? As with everyone else, time will tell. There are now there were no calls for him to be canceled in any way. There wasn't even a lot of criticism. You know, how far back do we go here? We're going to talk about Howard Stern in the in the 80s. Uh, what about the times all these people dressed in blackface on many occasions said many things that they wouldn't say today? Do we need to go back through the archives of anybody and everybody that might have said something that through today's prism is different? I don't think the answer is yes. What about Jimmy Kimmel, Madonna, Quentin Tarantino, their use of the M-word, Pulp Fiction in that case? What about the hundreds of songs right now on Spotify uh, that probably degrade women, call them derogatory names? Are there any other songs glorifying violence and murder and drugs that use the N-word? To their credit, Spotify says they're not canceling Joe Rogan, at least not, not as of today. If they do... The growing streaming platform Rumble, they've offered Rogan $100 million to make the switch. Now, whether you like Joe Rogan or not, there is a good sign that there is a movement in this country that's willing to accept the idea of freedom and turning the channel and not being forced to listen or watch something that you find offensive. And that's why I'm so adamant about this. Why? Because uh, it's a very simple reason. Nobody can force you. You get to decide. You have full control of this. Now, not everyone agrees. You got fake news, CNN. They would love for Rogan to be ripped off the airwaves. Of course, no one watches CNN, and their dear leader is now long gone. And now, as uh, one guest told Humpty Dumpty over the weekend, I would be nervous if I was at CNN after Mr. Potato Head's ouster. And according to the Wall Street Journal, multiple hosts are lashing out. Humpty is in a panic putting his resume together in all likelihood. Take a look. And you can draw a straight line from Andrew Cuomo's downfall to Zucker's. It is almost Shakespearean. But the people who say we're lacking journalism, that we've become an all talk channel, that we've run off and we're all opinions all the time, that Jeff Zucker led us astray, those people aren't watching CNN. They're not watching CNN. They're watching complaints about CNN on other channels that don't know what they're talking about. That's the truth. We lost our leader this week, but we're not going anywhere. So, we'll see you back here next week. They're not watching CNN. First time he stumbled on the truth. But really, what do you expect from Jeff Zucker's stenographer? Now, of course, Humpty is not a journalist, uh, nor is fake Jake News Tapper or Don Lemon. They're all opinion hosts, talk show hosts just like me, except I'm honest. They are, like me, members of the press, for sure. They're not fair and balanced journalists. And by the way, if you're one of the few that do watch CNN for any length of time, you'll know it's true. Look at Jeffrey Tubin recently masturbating on a Zoom call in front of his coworkers. Uh, he's not a journalist either. 
uh, fake news Jim Acosta, who just called a called Virginia a Soviet-style police state. That's journalism. That's not an opinion because they ended mask mandates. Yeah, not journalism. In the daytime, more opinion from other Trump-hating, obsessed Democrats that they say are journalists. They're not. They're talk show hosts. They're members of the press. They're talk show hosts. They occasionally do straight news, but they give a lot, a lot of opinion. Then we got Jonah Goldberg, by the way. He just joined fake news CNN. The anti-Trump pundit is now so desperate for a platform that he joined CNN three years after tweeting this meme right there. Yikes. Now, we can go on and on and on. Straight news has been extinct for a long time over there. All hosts pretty much now giving their opinion. But here's this thing. Fake news CNN still pretends that all of these hosts are nonpartisan journalists. Uh, they're not. They're talk show hosts. They're giving their opinion, which reminds me of a famous Russian quote. We know they are lying. They know that they are lying. They know we know they are lying. And we know they know we know they are lying. But they're still lying. This is fake news CNN. Now, I don't call for anyone to be fired, but if I were Humpty Dumpty, no, I'd probably be sweating a little more than he usually does. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.